So I've been shooting with the Mavic Pro for a little over a year now and was excited to see the Mavic Air come out and I want to see what kind of improvements have been made to the camera system. This review is really just going to focus on image quality. We're going to compare it to the Mavic Pro and then find the best settings for the Mavic Air. All right, so the first thing I noticed about the Mavic Air was that it had a much higher bit rate than the Mavic Pro. It's a 100 megabits a second, almost double what the Mavic Pro has. This really helps with motion. Um, I'm gonna show a shot right here from uh, Iceland when we had uh, Mavic Pro with us. And you can see as I'm tilting up with the car right here, the road just falls apart on this fast tilt. I'm happy to say that this is no longer a problem with the Mavic Air. So the next thing I wanted to see was the sharpness of the Mavic Air versus the Mavic Pro. So here we have the Mavic Air on the left and the Mavic Pro on the right. Coming in to look at sharpness, you can see that the Mavic Air is slightly uh, less detailed, but not, not by much. So I compared uh, different sharpening settings and found the sharpening at zero it seems to look the most natural and still holds a good bit of detail. So if you're unfamiliar with how to adjust these, just click on your manual settings right here. Click on the camera icon and click style. And now you can adjust your sharpening, contrast, and saturation. So the Mavic does not have D-Log, but it does have D-Cine-like and adjustable contrast. As you can see in this high contrast scene right here, positive contrast settings, you start to lose your shadows and lose a lot of highlights. As we go down to zero contrast, you can see that opens up the shadows a good bit and then going all the way to negative three contrast you get even more dynamic range from this and here you can see the extra highlight detail that we gain by going from the default of zero contrast to negative three contrast now anytime you shoot this flat you should add contrast back in post the trick is to add it in while still protecting the highlights i've made a LUT for the mavic air that does just that i'll make it available in the description One of the biggest things you can do to improve your shots is to slow down your movement. You wanna have a slow tilt, slow pans. This looks much more cinematic than fast erratic movement. So one thing you need to do to help with that is to slow down the sensitivity of the gimbal. We'll go into our DJI GO app, click the settings. Then we go to the first menu, click sensitivity, and move the yaw movement down to 35. From there, we click the gimbal Go to advanced settings and then adjust the pitch speed to 9 and the gimbal pitch smoothness to 19. These are just some settings that I suggest but you can play around just see what feels best with the way you use the remote. So the Mavic Pros always had a lot of noise even at ISO 100. The heavy compression and low bit rate really exacerbated the noisy sensor. So the Mavic Pro has always had a flicker in its noise pattern which you can see right here. The Mavic Air seems to have gotten rid of that flicker and the noise is much finer. So it's really exciting to see that DJI has improved the image processing some and that the noise is much more pleasant than the Mavic Pro. Now if you're going to be shooting uh, at low light, you're still going to want to denoise. If you already own Neat Video, which is a plug-in, I've made some noise profiles and presets that work really well with the Mavic Air. And these will help you to shoot in lower light and keep your image clean. Okay, and just a quick bonus tip, the Mavic Pro comes with this bag if you get the Fly More kit. And I found this to be great because I can just keep it over my shoulder. The Mavic Air just comes with this little guy. You don't really have anything to keep it on, but what I suggest is maybe just trying out one of these little carabiners. The remote can go right here, and then you could just hook this on your belt, and you've got a pretty cool way to carry this without having to buy another case for it. So if you're shooting with the Mavic Air and just editing the footage on your phone, I really don't suggest trying to do a lot of post-processing. Just shoot with these settings right here, which is uh, zero sharpening, your contrast at zero, and your saturation at negative one. They'll look good straight out of the camera. If you're doing professional work and you want to get the most out of the image, I suggest zero sharpening again, negative three contrast, and negative two saturation. Okay, so I know I didn't go into all the difference between the Mavic Air and the Pro. A few of my thoughts are that the image transmission from the Mavic Air seems to be a little bit laggy. I noticed that when I start to go forward, 
um, I don't really see it on the screen for a second or so. This kind of makes flying a little less responsive. I also noticed that the distance I can usually fly away from my house seemed to be a little bit shorter before I started to lose transmission. For me, even though the image seems to be a little bit cleaner, I still like the responsiveness of my Mavic Pro and the extra battery life and the build quality. I'm looking forward to seeing what DJI does in the Mavic Pro 2. Hope to do a review on that soon, so be sure to subscribe. But until next time, have fun.